Welcome to Tech TV Exclusive. I'm your host, King Tech Ali, and hey, I'm back. I'm your host, King Tech Ali, and today we have. Hey, King God! Gobble it, the dog. So, hey, we spoke you see, everything you see in the music, bro, it's, it's, not, real. it's not no rental shit, bro. That's real. Just, and I, you know, I'm a guy that came from no home to owning multiple homes. And, you know, it's like, you know, my daddy didn't give me a silver spoon in my mouth. Right. Self-made. I'm your host, King Tag Ali. Again, I'm your host, King Tag Ali. Watching Tag TV Scotia, I'm your host, King Tag Ali. You know what it is? We're in Detroit, Michigan. We're with Iki Gaga Entertainment, one of the CEO, one of the artists from Guy Entertainment. Yes, I've been with D Boy Email yesterday. My GoPro didn't work. And I had too much juice on it. My boy got a whole mansion out there. This boy got a whole mansion. So the switch up is different. Yeah. See where we go from semi-automatic to how we live life. Exactly. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, we spoke you see, everything you see in the music, bro, it's, it's, not, real. it's not no rental shit, bro. That's real. Just, and I, you know, I'm a guy that came from no home to owning multiple homes. And, you know, it's like, you know, my daddy didn't give me a silver spoon in my mouth. Right. He's self-made. So, it just, you know, music... It's not no rental cars, it's not no rental houses. I'm not gonna say proudly, man. I work for this shit. Right. That ain't shit ain't come easy. So with rap music, man, you know what I'm saying? I'll express, I'll show what I have, what I got, my expressions, and you know, my experiences through life. You know what I mean? And my my main genre, bro, is to motivate the youth, you know what I'm saying? You know, like bro, when I used to when I used to be young, man, I used to watch rap music, you know? Like, not because oh my god, I wasn't really talking about the lyrics that time bro i was looking at the cars the clothes the houses i'm like wow when i grow up i want to be just like you you know what i'm saying yeah yeah and that's what i'm doing honest guy i ain't gonna lie to you but the hip-hop culture motivated me in a different way man growing up in detroit new york you know that's all you see nice cars pretty women nice cars houses you know what i'm saying and how do you get it hard work you know what i'm saying hard work they got it through music i got it through working hard but there's the hell you know Everybody have different talents, you know, so, you know, don't hold back, show up. One thing I want to say that, and I, I think you're going to agree with, is that me being a Bengali, right, from being about from Bangladesh, yeah. or being from Asia, or being Indian, you know, I could, they could relate as well, because yeah, yeah. our family is a little strict. Yeah. Any family, they, they're strict, but we show it, Bengali people show it more, talk about it more, right? Is that, right now, Iki Guy is doing music. He's doing a lot of things when it comes to the, to the side. If you would have done this, right? If I, what I'm doing right now, my age, right? If, if you would have done this at this age and played around and not be serious, trust me, his father would have been mad. Family would have been yeah, mad. Family would have been really upset. Right. Well, it's because. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Man, me growing up, bro, I was one of those kids like that do it and they'd be like, oh my God, I did it. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Because I know if I ask to do it, it's going to be a no. You know what I'm saying? So I know a lot of people can relate. We're all like this. We will do the damage. Like when I first bought my motorcycle, I was 18. My parents told me, don't, you know what I'm saying? When I, like, I said, my friend bought one. They're like, oh my God, no way, no way. You know, there's no way. Why his parents let him do it? But can you say that in Bangladesh? Oh, yeah. So I want to say, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to say, 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 I'm going ಮಾಡಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡು <laughs> 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 ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ 
Don't tell your parents you about to do drugs and then go do it. But I'm talking about like, yo, you want to buy a car, you can afford it. Go get it, man. Show your parents. You know, they're going to say no. But at the end of the day, I don't know what you're talking about. 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 So you have to, you know, they want to see you do good. Your parents want to see you nice car, nice house, nice motorcycle, whatever nice do. I'm going to go to the house and go to the house. ね You know, if you don't want me to talk about this front of camera, you let me know. Oh, there's a lot of other people in Ghana, entertainment. We have a lot of other people. No, no, I know. This is one of the artists. Oh, one, one, of the one, artists. One, one of the artists. Email, yeah. Yeah. This, listen, being in a team, right, or being in a crew, yeah. to be something, it's not only one brain. It's many brains together. Many brains, yeah. You know, so many names you could mention. There's a lot of people that's, yeah. that's the small things make matters, and that counts more. We for, sometimes we forget their name. Yeah. Right? But they all matters. Everybody who's there. The entire shout out to entire Detroit, Michigan. No, no, no. Let me let me give you this. I'm gonna give right. some big shout outs to a lot of people. All right, go ahead, go ahead, I have go. some. I have some older brothers that really helped me when I first started. So you know, first I shot Ben Lagiri, then I shot Victor Fuda. Third video, a lot of people started coming, like Deep Boy Bengali. Like I tell you, big shout out to Ramon Bai, right. Halet Bai, right. Simon, them niggas, bro. What Ramon Bai did for me, bro, I'm gonna tell you like this from the heart. This man and Halet, they actually they're they're a lot older than me, right? This guy promoted the music from like morning to night, bro. The one guy actually went out of his way to like go to stores and hang out banners. You know oh, what I'm wow. saying? Like that's how much love. Like you don't find that with payment. You know, I can't even pay these guys. You know what I'm saying? You know, not that they would take any money from me, but that's called genuine love. You know what I'm saying? They they blasted me everywhere. You know what I'm saying? To like, I've never performed this stage. I'm a very shy person, bro. You know, like don't get me wrong. You know, I do Gaga, but I'm a very, I'm a Sarombe here. But you know, it doesn't seem like it. But these guys pushed me to go to the stage and do what I do. And they're still, you know what I'm saying, you know, doing that. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, a lot of, you know, people have a lot of, you know, ups and downs and friendships and stuff like that. But these are the people that really pushed me to that next level. Yes, I'm making music, but there's people behind it. Also with the community, like all their families, like they helped me. Their kids helped me. You know what I'm saying? Their brothers helped me. And a lot of the people that are from Michigan, You know, they also helped me too. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 you know, I can't say a lot of names that I have to address everybody's names. But they helped me, man. Like, they, my hood put me up. You feel me? So you have to be, your hood have to put you up. Tell them, I'm glad they're going to my grandma to my dad. To my sister to my dad. Time for a barrel match to my sister. It's very important. So I'm sure we're going to have to say, let's do it to me. They're going to my area. I'm not going to support us. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. Thank you, man. That's a big thing, bro. Thank you for that. Especially in the Bengali community, right? Now you can go on what Himal was saying. Yeah, I'm going to continue with that. But that what you said, I want to point it out before I lose that. It's really important to acknowledge your community as an as an artist. If you want to be an artist or you want to be something, especially being a politician, be right being anything in life, you need the people around you more than the people outside. Because if you're the people, Look, when you, especially on the, in our country, to get married, people come and ask you about you in your community. Exactly. So you know what I'm saying. So it doesn't matter what you, what do you do, where you go. It's where you start from matters more exactly. than anything, right? So exactly. then listen, respect your elders. Yeah. Maybe one day they will see your talent, acknowledge it, and take yeah. you to the next level. Yeah. You know, never know. But with yeah. that being said, thank you for that. It was a really strong message. Yeah. I want to point that out. And like I said, thanks to everybody. Thanks to Kutuspai. Hasalbai, uh, Nasalbai, there's a Hasla. Show the thanks. You know why? Thanks to the people who's watching in their bed as well, because if they didn't yeah. click on that video, we wouldn't be here. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So thank for that. And also, I want to now moving forward to an email by said, right? The email, T Boy email. He said to me yesterday, there's a point in time when Ikiga and email got together, they go. Before they go home, they had to put makeup on their face. How true is that? <laughs> <laughs> no, hell no. That's from all the bangers. You know, we used to get into a lot of fights, bro. Right, right, right. So, right. you know, like, me and my clique, like, you know, growing up, like, me, Nibel, Russ, Mo, Dulal, my dude. Like, I'm talking about, bro, like, in high school, we used to get into bangers. Like, 
I'm not sure if someone is like, let's go look at the all the time. So, you know, we get into fights with blacks, but maybe, you know, we just get our ass beat or, you know, beat their ass. Still, you know, I got stretches. Our families are really strict. Like, if they found out we got into fights, I'm not out all the time. I think. So, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, like, yo, let's put some makeup on our face where our parents find out, bro. I think we're going to get a little pain you know what I'm saying? So, so, you know, that's stuff like that. I mean, that led to, like, us getting older, getting to, uh, you know, fights in the, you know, outside clubs. And, oh, it's, I'm always to fight, you know. He just, trouble just follows us, bro. You know, still till this day, I'll tell you, trouble follows me. I don't know, I have a bad fucking curse on me or something. I got to get that checked out. You know, so I got to go see mom or something, you know. Right, right. Like, trouble just follows me. But, you know, I'm trying to do right because, listen, man. I can't afford to get locked up right now, man. I'm at an age right now, bro. I'm trying to thrive, you know? I got right. kids and shit that I got to... They look up to me, so... You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I'm not into that shit no more. Like, How many kids do you have? And I got three, bro. Another Marshall. one on the way, you heard? Marshall. I got two Marshall. boys, two girls, you know? Marshall. Marshall. So, you know what I'm saying? So... Alhamdulillah, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got to do better because you got to set an example for your kids. Yeah, man. So, like, look, my, my, my wife, she's white American. So, I have biracial kids. So, I imagine... I have to... I have to live with both worlds to show them what's right and show what's wrong. It's not like easy for me. Right, like, right. You know, like you know, people get married to Bengali, and, you know, so I have to teach them my culture as well, keep their culture with it. And, you know, like a melting pot and go the right direction. So I can't slip and fall and, you know, say, get into some bullshit because of my ego and get into a fight and get locked up. And guess what? Now, not only affected my life, but affected my whole life. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? My parents, my brothers, sisters. You know, it's, Cause I've been there, bro. You know, I've been locked up and shit. That shit is not a pleasant feeling. But I gave so much money to the goddamn law, bro. I could have probably had like ten of these bitches right now. You feel me? So I'm telling you, bro, it's, it's, it's not easy, man. I'll tell you, from 2013 to like 2018, bro, they gave me menace to society in 2013. That's how messed up I had it, bro. It was so na- it was so nasty. Like I never want to wish this on my worst enemy, bro. When the law gets you, bro, it's one after another. Like you can't, you can't. It's like. Until like you just disappear or something, I'm like from the will of Allah, man, and thank God, bro. Like I'm breathing today, still, like you know, Mashallah. it's just not just fighting wise, just like everything, man. Know. You know, family problems, you know, you're you're you know catching DUIs and all types of shit. Right, right, it's right. ridiculous, man. You know, so it's experience, man. I don't watch the, the law. Stay away from the law, man. Two things I'm gonna tell you, man. You wanna look good in America, have good credit, and have a good clean record. And be true to yourself and you out of here. You're good. Get a job and keep going. America is to build you, not to break you. Don't mess with the law. You see, don't get in trouble. I wanna I wanna point out as as a person, as an artist, artist doesn't come from doing good. Artist comes from doing bad. Exactly. Learning from mistakes. Mistakes. Right. So now this is third side. There's there's a um, there's the entrepreneur side of him as well. Oh yeah, we're gonna know all that when we sit down, when we listen to him, and quiet it, put his words together. But I wanna, I'm gonna, I wanna. This is this is the whole thing is how he started his jo- music journey from the from the road to the from stage, the from the road to the stage, from road to the stage. And now the thing is, now next question is, what is the first song you wrote? Uh, road in the road. I want you to. I want you to spit it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, yeah. I want you to spit it. So, so it's a few words. I told you. It all started because somebody, my right. boy, I'd even been to. They dared me. They're like, hey, so you all call yourself all this rapper shit. They used to rap before. Why don't you write something? So my boy, I was like, what you better write about? I don't know. I, I you know, like, I, I haven't never wrote a rap like that in a long time. Right. It's like, you know, you know that one song, Amito Bala Nai Bala Lui That one song. I'm like, yo, what? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm into a lot now. I'm like, okay, hold up, man. Okay, so I took that one. like, that's your topic. Right, right. I said, okay, I'll see you guys next week because I got to go tomorrow to Las Vegas and I'll see you guys next week and only hang out again or in two weeks. So I'm in my head, is clicking because, you know, when somebody gives me a challenge, bro, in general, like, I, I take it serious. You know, I'm like, okay, you know what? Don't doubt me, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. So I went home, I'm like, yo. Amito <laughs> 
আমি না আমার দেহ তাইয়ার তুরা মাত এখন তোমার কুসব নাই জীবন আমার নষ্ট কইলা যে দিন দেখছি তোমার অত ভালো লাগছে কইলা মোলা সুন্দর ফুলি কি তাই ইজো করতে আসে হিন্দি ফিল্ম দেখে কইলা ভালো কাজে লাগে মোলা সুন্দর চেহারা তাই মেঘলা দিন বসে ইউ নো সে স্টাফ লাইক দ্যাট রাইট আই আই কেপ্ট অন গোইং এন্ড অল মাই এক্সপেরিয়েন্সেস দ্যাট আই ওয়েন্ট থ্রু ইন মাই লাইফ আই মিন উইথ মাই প্যাস্ট এন্ড আই পুট ইট অল ইন ওয়ার্ডস ইট ওয়াজ লাইক টু পেজেস লং ইউ নো সে সো আই ওয়েন্ট ব্যাক দ্য নেক্সট উইক এন্ড আই টোল দেম লাইক ইউ Hey, you go, nigga. You know what I'm saying? They're like, bro, ain't nobody about to read that shit. Why don't you do me a favor and record it? They're just messing with me. Right, right. I'm like, yo, hell no. This nigga's keeping me, giving me bullshit, bro. You know? <laughs> I'm like, bullshit. I'm like, damn, what the fuck? Right, you know, right. I just gave you the song. When I did, I went home, bro, and I put like two phones together. And you know what I'm saying? I'm like reading this shit over a beat. Like, you know, like it was a King Bond beat. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, you know, it has a little bit of tone. Like, do, 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 do. So it goes with my words. I'm like, you know what? Here you go, boom. So I just basically read the whole story and then that was like a four minute song bro. <laughs> and I went there and I went there I'm like here you go nigga. they're like yo it's pretty good it's good so now go record it you know what I'm saying so that's not where it started so I was like oh hell no so that's the first time I actually made music after like well I, I can't even count 2008 because they made everything for me I just wrote some stuff and put it together and I'm trying to put that you want you know what I'm saying this is <laughs> Can I do that or no? Yeah. I'm, I'm getting recorded right now. My boy getting recorded right now as you speak. <laughs> I'm oh, my boy, you got that. Yeah, yeah, dog, what it is. Welcome to Detroit, man. You told me about how long you've been driving this thing, man. Shit, dog, I've been driving this thing for four years, bro. Four years, yeah. Yeah, four years, you know? What is the... All over, huh? Yeah, tell me uh, two things about this. One is going to be like, what is the best experience you ever had or something you ever saw, something... Never, any other field never seen. Listen, being in this field, being in this field, being so. in truck is straight freedom, bro. Okay. This is what freedom looks like. You know, you out here, you travel in the world, and you're getting paid. You know, not the world, but whatever you want to be driving local. Are you driving, you know, over the road? You know, what I'm saying you driving state to state, country different countries. This is freedom right here, man. Right. Plus, you're getting paid to do it. You know, so if you ain't got a degree or nothing, you don't have a career and shit like that. I, I suggest everybody to get a CDL, man. You know what I mean? It's a different type of business. Hell yeah, you know? As you see in the bed, you got a whole bed in there as well? A bunk bed comes down, so if you have somebody traveling with you, they can sleep at top, you know? Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, a lot of these guys, they do team driving, so they have, you know, just like me and you riding right now. They have two other drivers. Every eight hours, every four or five hours, they'll switch, and, you know, like go on a road trip or something. Right, right, right. So, this is like a road trip. So road trips are fun, right? Right, right, of course. So, you know, imagine you go on a road trip every day, you know? So being in a highway for the long, so how long you be, how long do you spend in a highway? All depends where you're going, you know? If you're going over the road, obviously, you know, you're going to be highway majority of the route, you know, until you get to the, the state and then you got to go in local routes. But local, you know, still you got to hop on the highway to go to a different city, so it's faster. So highways are majority, you know, the best, safest place to be is in the highway for a truck, honestly. Because it's local, sometimes they have low bridges. You got to know your route, man, you know. You got to read everything. You can't just, right, like, right. you know, avoid a sign and just go through a route. Like, 13 sixes are high, you know, the height. If you go anything under that, you're going to hit the truck, crash everything. It happens all the time right here, man, on Central and John Crow. Right. One more thing I want to say, I want to appreciate you giving me this time and opportunity for conducting this interview at this your your workplace, know, you know? I wanted to ask this question, how this transition? I know one thing that you never speak about this, your life in the music. Hell no. Uh, but you also do a music, you're a great artist. Thanks, you, man. You're just starting your career right now, which is which is amazing. You, you, you just not only Thank came you. out a few singles, but also you came out with a few, <clears throat> few collaboration with artists around the world and back home as well. When I say back home, I'm talking about Bangladesh. Yeah, you yeah. just released this song, uh, uh, Shunduri Komla Part 2. Yeah, yeah, 2.0, yeah. Yes, the 2.0, and you also just uh, collaborated with one of the uh, young singer artists, Italian young talent from Bangladesh, Toshiba. Yeah. And also, uh, okay. you, yeah, and you also have a young talent also in your age, but also young and 
very talented D-boy email yeah, from yeah. Detroit as well. So tell me a little bit about that. How that came into a play? How did you really, you know, pull it off? So honestly, like, bro, you know, music's been around forever in my life, you know. Yeah. Last I can remember, the first time I ever, like, you know, got into music was through my friends, like, you know, and my other boy, I said, like, sure, he, he lives in Virginia now. Mm. You know, he was into music, rap, you know, back in, like, I'm talking about 03, 04. Right, right, right. So, you know, that time was in, like, eighth grade and shit. That's when I met them niggas and, you know. Ninth grade, you know, we used to hang out a lot, so we used to go to Russ's house. You know, he got a little karaoke mic, and we used to jam out there. But, right. you know, and then I was always like, I'm not gonna lie, you have to be shy about this shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, still I'm, you know, so shy and shit. But, you know, honestly, so during that time, they used to do music. Yvel, Russell, and some other guys. They used to be in their little group. They had a little uh, rap group and singing group and shit like that. Right. And you know, I used to hang out with them a lot. And so back in like. You know, 2008, we did we did a track. You know, Hamtamiko uh, Taki. So that was the first time I actually ever rapped. But prior to that, I you know I used to sing with Russ. You know, like you know Kumar Sanu is one of my favorite artists. You know, Sonu Nigam. You know, stuff like that. So you know, you know Udit Nairan. You know, like this type of stuff I'm into, like music, you know, actual singing. So you're talking about mostly of like. You grew up in a Bollywood musical, all 90s and Bollywood, 80s. And Dr. Shore, don't forget him, you know, yeah. and Dr. Shore Bengali. I'm, I'm all into the music, you know. Grew up in the household, my dad is a musician himself. Like, he actually knows how to sing, you know? Okay. Like, so I, I guess I get the talent from him a little bit, you know? So he's running in the blood as well? Yeah. He's yeah. right? Something like that. So okay, yeah. okay. So tell me more about the Shinduri Kamala so, so, the yeah. So, you know, back to what I was saying. So, Imel, you know, he's been around. He's been my friend for a long time. And, I just started doing music two years ago, and you know he hopped right there on the bandwagon. Right. He's like, hey, bro, you know you doing music shit? We back on. Right, right, they, right. They they stopped doing music for a decade, and we coming back after a decade later. So you know he definitely hopped on the bandwagon as soon as I started making few tracks. And then you know, uh, as far as how we met Toshiba, you know what I'm saying Toshiba, you know she came to our the last convention we had for Bana in Michigan, and you know she said she uh, you know she likes our track and the music we do. We were Sileti and she's Sileti too, so. You know, we kind of, you know, over talked it and, you know, we're like, hey, let's do a track. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. And she's like, yeah, definitely. You know, she wants that, you know, hip hop vibe in Bangladesh. And we want that same collaboration in America. Like, yo, you know, we can show people, hey, rapping is not a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? Majority right. of the time when people rap, you know, our Bengalis are so close minded. They think like, oh, rapping is bad. You know what I'm saying? They're cussing. No, majority of the time, rapping is a form of storytelling. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when people are telling a story, you know, sometimes, you know, in, in music, you say it by, you know, like how regular singers, they just say a few lines. Right, right. But when you rap, you get to tell a whole full story. So, you know, Sundari Bambala was, you know, people, you know, Toshi was Toshiba's idea. She said, hey, you know, we want to do a track that we can, uh, you, you can play for generations to come. Like wedding songs are very popular in our, you know, in our country. In our, you know, everywhere. So, if you made a wedding song with a little bit of hip hop in it, it will bump for generations to come. Right. And that's where the idea from Dori Komola came from. You know what I mean? So, she was good people. Big shout out to her. You know what I'm saying? She, for giving us the opportunity. Right. Because she's an icon in Bangladesh right now. She got like some videos, she got over 200 million views and shit, man. So, it's really, a, you know, it was, a, it was a pleasure working with her. Yeah, she is a very young talent, and yeah. she is. Uh, yeah. Not long. It's not been too long. She yeah. just she blew up fast, just like that. She got a lot of plugs too, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's really good that we yeah. collaborated with her, so we can use the resources that she has. Do you think by bringing her into your, I don't know, having the opportunity with her to to sing your song, do you think that opens a mini door for you? Absolutely. Or, okay. Absolutely. Okay. I, I got to met her uh, producers. You know, some of the other uh, singers around the world. I spoke to them also. That we might collab with down the line. And you know, just just somebody, you know, she's a she's a celebrity, man, you know, and you know, it's good to walk in the same path she's walking. You know, instead of like, you know, saying I'm better than you, join them, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know. So that's what we're working on right now. I like that. You see, besides saying I'm better than you, yeah. Let me join you and work together exactly. and see we better together. Man. Better I love together. that. I love that's that. True. It's just beautiful. I love yeah, that. Man. Ain't no beef in this shit, man. I'm cool with everybody, bro, you know? You know, I embrace my enemy. If they want to slap me one go on one side, I'll tell them my other side. Here you go, slap me again, bro, but let's be cool. You, you know what I'm saying? We don't want to have no beef, you know? You know, God didn't create us to have beef, man. We're supposed to be friends and we're supposed to 
you know, help each other. Right, grow, right, right, right. That's what the prophet said, you know. That's right. Can't be, you know. Can be from around. Now, now that I also want to call uh, Mahatma Mahandas Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi yeah. for saying what he just said. You know, if I give you more one side, take the other. You know. You know what I'm saying? Fighting so, doesn't create. Fighting doesn't create solution, friendship, man. You know, it is not a solution to nothing. You know, peace doesn't. So if somebody's beefing with you, you put your hands up, and guess what? That person will follow you because you just created something that he never thought can be happening. You know, you gave it, you gave it up, and now he respects you because you came with peace. Peace is always the solution to everything. Question, right? I wanted to, you know, let me get you a little background, right? You from Bangladesh, Sile, right? Yeah. You grew up, uh, you born here or you was born in no, Bangladesh? I was, I, was, I was born in Bangladesh. I came here when I was in third grade, so 1998. I was born in 89, so I came to uh, 98. So I went to school. I have to be in school. Yeah. I went to, uh, you know, couple of, I was a good student, actually. Man. I got, you know, you know, Bangladesh, I still have. You know, I can right. write and read in Bangla, you know. And when I came here, actually, my parents, you know, they really pressured me to, you know, learn Arabic and learn Bangla and, you know, write and stuff like that. So. You know, come from a very religious background. So, you know, my grandfather used to teach us Arabic, and yeah. my, my parents pushed me to, you know, read and write Bangla all the time as a kid, you know, all the time. So that's the reason why I can, you know, talk fluently and write fluently still to this day because of them. And, you know, as far as, you know, the lingo that I use, I try to keep the old school alive, you know what I mean? Right, like, right. I, I have a lot of older friends, you know what I'm saying? They're like, you know, our dad's age, our grandfather's age, they're my friends, I, you know. I, I'm, I hang with them, so I, I pick up a lot of stuff what they say, and you know this is how I come with those, you know those phrases that we don't use as young generation kids. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So I, I don't want to pick on a lot of your bio, but it's really important for for me to know because when I do ask questions, I could pick point and ask those questions. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna be really. No, you go ahead, yeah, so, so now you did not grow up when you came to America, right? When you was yeah. young, when your father migrated to this country yeah. or migrated you guys to this country. You know, this, at that time, time was different, right? Absolutely. Time Absolutely. was different. Yeah. Time was different. The vibe was different, right? The energy was different. Oh, right? yeah. Politics was different, right? Yeah. Rule and regulation was different. Yeah. And then when it comes to police and hate crime and uh, segregation, it was different, right? Yeah. All that makes a very, very strong effort as, as a migrant at that time, right? As a migrant to migrate here, move here. It's like watching Karate Kid, you know, go to China, Seen karate kid, how he had to face a bully, but it was worse. Oh, man. three times worse back in the day. Back yeah. in the day. So let me ask you: You did not go to New York, right? Yes, I did. You did. So how long you stayed in New York? I came. I moved to New York, nineteen ninety-eight, and I moved to Michigan in two thousand one. So I went to school, third, fourth, fifth grade over there. You know what I'm saying? I went to uh, PS seventeen Queens. You know what I'm saying? I still live in Astoria, thirty fourth Street, thirty eighth Ave. You know? Right, 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 right. So you know. Coming to America, bro, you know, like, it was, it was shocking, man. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you, you know, I learned Spanish before I learned English. <laughs> <laughs> That's how crazy yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. New York is, you know, it's all Spanish over there. So, you know, I thought it, yeah, Spanish was English. So I'm coming home speaking Spanish. My dad's like, yo, what are you talking about? Because he came here when he was in his team. He was like 19 when he came to America. Right, right. So, you've so, you, know, to... so you know, you've been in the hood, you know, you've been, you know, yeah. been around in New York. Like, very popular in New But York. you also, just keeping that sh short... I don't want to keep that low. I don't want to. I want to talk about more stuff. Yeah. But I want to keep that short and say that the transition from New York to Detroit you didn't seem that much because of the age limit. Yeah. But I would say growing up in Detroit wasn't easy at that time. Hell no. Right. New York wasn't easy either, bro. Right. You got a few fights, you know. But New York was more of a melting pot. Like you have so many different cultures, mm -hmm. religions. You know, say so you got Mexican, Puerto Ricans, Bengali, Indians, Pakistanis, black, white. You know, it was like, whoa, who's who? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was, it was just when I was just getting used to, you know what I'm saying, New York, family ended up moving to Michigan. And when I came to Michigan, you know, I went to all Detroit schools, so it was all Hollywood, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so I'm like, yo, what happened? You know, and now this fellow is looking at me crazy, like, you know what I'm saying, man, getting into fights, getting jumped, you know. Yeah, yeah. schools makes me a tough motherfucker after, you know, going to Detroit schools. And, I, you know, I made a lot of friends, too, you know, a lot of yeah, enemies, yeah. but... Well, it was a great experience, man. You know what I mean. But when we first moved to Michigan, man, there was barely any Bengalis. You know what I mean. Through the whole school, you probably have like eight Bengalis. You know what I'm saying. So you know that's how it was. You know. And now, back to what? Twenty years later, twenty-five years later, man, it's all Bengalis now. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I mean. Listen, um, being moving place to place and try to build that 
uh, people near you, you know, knowing, f- being familiar with the neighborhood, the community, it's tough at that time, right? Yeah. And um, do you think taking that experience, that story, and putting in your song, that's can the audience that's wait for that? That's absolutely what I try to do. See, writing just doesn't happen. See, I write. I don't just, you know, spit rap off the top of my head. You know what I'm saying? So majority of the stuff that I write about is the experiences that I had or somebody close to me had and you know, I had something to do with it. Right. And that's how the story comes out to be, you know, genuine because I'm telling a real story. You know what I mean? Versus just, you know, rapping is not just about rhyming. Right, right. Most people think, oh, you know, anybody can rap. Yeah, anybody right. can rap the words together, but, you know, you have to. Rhyming. It sounds better when, it, when, it's, when it's really true. You know, you can really, people can relate to stuff. You know what I mean? So right now, you're not only you're not only a rapper, you're not only an artist, you're not only a, a truck driver, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. You're not only an um, influencer in the community as well. We, we didn't mention yet yeah. things you do for the community as well. Like you mentioned actually already, for you did a few uh, few few months ago, a few weeks ago, yeah. you had a whole show. I know you was performing, but you had played a major role. Uh, yeah. Right? I was the convener, co yeah. convener of the show, Fubana. You know, Fubana is one of the biggest shows in the Shout America. out to Fubana, right? Yeah, yeah. You know Even though they're not paying for the sponsor and whatever <laughs> it is, right? But still, yeah, shout out. Know, they, they, they were a great help. They, right. they gave me big recognition, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, they really enjoyed what I did, you know, as far as music wise, you know what I mean? Right, right. And, uh, you know, my part, role part was I made sure, like, you know, all the artists, you know, they came in, they, they were good, you know, with the, some of the artists that we picked to come to perform. Know, everything was in order. That was right. My job, you know, helping them with getting the biggest stage. But we had a 32 by 32 stage. And right, right. Normally, like, you know, shows like these, those Melas, they put, they barely have, you know, they have a 12 by 12 or 12 by 24. But this was the biggest stage. Like, it was the talk of the town, man, you know? So you played a major role. Yeah, we got there for them, you know? It yeah. Cost about like 25 Gs. But, you know, that's good. That's good, yeah. yeah. We well, gotta, that's being part, that's playing. Big, yeah. big role for the part of the uh, yeah. being part of the community, right? Making sure things, the entertainment you know, is there. I'm on a lot of sponsors, too, sponsors you know, and stuff uh, like that to fund the uh, show too. You know, right? I brought like about nine businessmen that I have personal, personally helped right. with these businesses. You know, so that's so, why. I'm, so small things that you also been doing for the community as well. Not only that, you also a father, a great father. Yeah, so yeah. you know what I'm saying, and and. My thing is that why you waited all this year to do music? Why not? Like you know, you know, nowadays if you see artists, young artists, you know, if you look in American hip hop, yeah. if you look in well, Indian hip hop, hip hop now, or some Bangladesh couple of artists. I mean, there's great artists from Dhaka, Siled, you know, that's coming up. But there's also young talent. Why? Why now? Why now? My thing is, man, you know. I had a huge fallout, you know, right. in my early 20s. So, you know, growing up, you know what I'm saying, I wasn't always into trucking. I was in finance for a long time, you know, and I had a huge fallout, you know, in my lifetime. I don't want to get into details, but after that, you know, I lost myself. Right. And, uh, you know, and, you know, struggling, you know, regular life, you know what I'm saying, struggling, family, work, jobs, you know what I'm saying. You didn't really have time to make music. Like, you know, when you make music, you got to have a fresh mind, thought, you know what I'm saying. Like, you got to have time, actually. So now after years later, you know what I'm saying, my backbone is stronger than how it was, you know what I'm saying? I got, you know, good things going for me right now, you know, yeah. basically came back from the gutter, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, now I actually have time to make music and all the experiences, you know, as a kid, what, do, what can you barely talk about? You know, as a 20 year old, what can you really talk about? You didn't really see much, nothing, but, you know, probably you see shit in high school and after that college and what, girlfriend and you know, uh, party with your friends. I mean, that's what people talk about nowadays in music, you know, how they, you know, partied and how they had a girlfriend and love stories and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, if you if you ask me, if a 50-year-old guy came to rap right now, right. you know, the words and the, the stories you'll hear from him, you know what I'm saying? You'd be like, wow. Because they actually lived there, been there, done it. So me as a, you know, my mid-30s doing this because I actually lived what I talk about. So that's right. why, you know, the, you know, the words come out the way they do, the, you know, the experiences that I, you know, had it makes the, you know, rap, I think it's good, you know, I hope people like it, right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. But, you know, that's why, honestly, you know, I have more time now, and basically I got bored, I guess, you know, like, you know, I work, and, you know, honestly, bro, 
being in trucking has a lot to do with me thinking and rapping and thinking about because look man i drive eight nine hours out the day you know what right, i'm saying right so you know not all the time i'm on the phone talking to someone or talking to you know whatever you don't say my friends on the phone you have a lot of time to think and this open road man gives you a lot of recalls on your life a lot of experiences a lot of thoughts just come randomly because you know oh wow you know i couldn't believe i did this when i was 19 or that 20 without 17 or this uh, this happened this girl broke my heart or that happened or you know I, I i was i dated this girl i you know all these feelings just randomly come as you drive you know, open road man that's why they say you know you know when you go out when, when you're out there you know when you have a something going on with your life go for a drive go for, go go think and open road helps you think man you know and a lot of times bro when i was doing you know i drive local now but when i was doing over the road like i'm talking about vegas and back that's what really me personally i was i was a writer in the back in the past like you know the writing you know letters to girlfriends and shit but you know as far as a story writer man you know, it happened to me the last four years when i first started hitting the road over right. the road in right. las vegas and california and 20 hours driving man, 16 hours driving thinking now you're talking to yourself it's basically how they say when niggas go to jail and they come out as rappers and superstars go ahead, because hey. they have time time to think uh, yeah. what you're thinking what happened you know and this is me the road helps me cope and learn you know what I'm saying and you know stuff that i want to you know talk about you know what i'm saying in music that's why we're doing this video we're doing this interview and then in the road the road has a lot to do with my because rap career, because you know it doesn't matter what you do now. It's how did you start? How did you and start? What did you start from? I'll show you writings, man. I have right. I have a book I used to write before. You know, I got an iPhone before I had a you know Android, so right. you know you didn't have uh, the options that you could write, and type your words. But so, but every time I used to you know think like you know six hours, I take a little break, right, you right. know, take a little nap. I'm like, yo, you know, writing. And another way, how I learned how to make music was bro. I put beats in my head. So as I as I'm driving, all I listen to is beats. beats. And like as as the beats going, I just words just come and like yo. And the, number one, people say yo, how do you write rap? You know what I'm saying, bro? You gotta have a topic. You know, right, right. I didn't learn this. I didn't learn this for myself. I learned that four years ago. I was hanging out with a dude. You know, he's a musician. I didn't. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's he's into like rock music and band. I love music. So you know, I was, we we're just talking one day. Like, hey man, you know, I thought you used to rap. And so I'm like, man. I, Teenage days, like, right, like right, right. I'm like, yo, you know, so and then it's like, you know, so do me a favor. Like, we used to hang out a lot every weekend, stuff being you know, around. But it's like, hey, do me a favor, write me, write me a rap, and I'm gonna put it on my head. You know, I'm gonna right. see if I can, you know, do it as a rock music. I said, okay, I'll write something. So, I, you know, what I did, I started, you know, writing for him, and you know, and then he was like, so I'm like, what do I write? I was like, well, you gotta have a topic, right? And that's when I realized, I'm like, oh, you gotta have a topic. If you're writing about your girlfriend, if you're writing about your car, if you're writing about a good day writing by your father you know whatever the case may be right you know what i'm saying it's like you, you got to have a topic and if you stick it to topic your story is general people will listen to it you know what i mean but most rappers bro they go from talking about their clothes to like murdering somebody you know how that happened you know what I'm <laughs> no. it's like you writing but from you started from getting yeah. up from your bed now you yeah. just grave somebody right. <laughs> like, you know, how do you do that i so, did like so you know so you gotta stick to topic and right. topic makes the story listen to here. Right. So I wrote a song about Bangladesh, I'm actually not Bangladesh like Bangladesh hood and I went to Bangladesh, you know, so just for a vacation. and like I was catching words what people were saying. I'm right. like, wow, you know, I'm Zam Bum La Le Mama you know. Different thing. I'm like, yo, hold on, let me put this down, <laughs> you know. So this you know, stuff you gotta catch, you gotta be have a good year and you gotta be willing to listen. And a lot of these rappers, man, they so ego is so high, man. You gotta let that go to rest, man. You right. Have a right. Ego if you wanna have a learn, you know, if you wanna learn things and shit. So you gotta, you know, pipe You gotta down. be a student, I would say, yeah, right? I'm a student there all day, bro. I respect any age, any religion, any culture, bro. Hey, you listen. You gotta learn. You know? This is what I wanna do since you brought that up, right? Yeah. So if uh, you went to Bangladesh, you do another thing. Yeah. You wanna be at that place. Yeah. You can't be, you can't write a record on music and not be in Dominican. It's a way though. I mean, or no, Jamaica. You, you gotta have, you gotta, you gotta have the experience. experience. You don't necessarily have to go there, Good. but I'm gonna tell you like this. You know, best things to do, man. You know, if you, you gotta experience it first before you write about anything, unless you are like a hell of a story writer. Right. That's on you. But I, you know, I watch a lot of movies. I, I hear, I listen to a lot of music. As far as I see, man, 
you know, people actually go to those places, you know what I mean? Like for example, bro, you know, people are religious as music is haram, right? So, you know, just one day, just, you know, I went to the mosque and we're talking about stuff. This guy was telling me, listen, bro, music is not haram. Music is just a storytelling. You know wait, what I'm wait, wait. Music was never haram because our ancestors, haram, they used to go to like graveyards, they used to go in front of the waters, they used to, they, they used to talk to God, man, you know? And how people do King David, for, for example, you know what I'm saying? That was the like shit, like, bro, we used to sing and talk to God, you know what I'm saying? Oh, most of all this Nasheed, this is a singing. I get, I guess, you know what I'm saying, now the beats, I mean, don't get me wrong, it is haram. Yeah. You're talking about sex, rape, and, you know, killing people and murder and stuff like that is haram. But right. usually music is not haram. Bro. Music is the way of expressing yourself. You know what I'm saying? And, and another thing, bro, you know, I, I, want, I want to say from personal experience, like, you know, as much as people want to make music, people just sing other people's shit. You know, you're not going to get too far doing that. An old man told me, you know what I'm saying? Like, listen, you want to make your music? To me, to my new now. Right. He's like, talk about yourself. Right. You know, who can say, say what really happened to you and what you really went through unless you sing it? Right. You come up with your own, and guess what? One day it'll hit. Maybe you might not be able to see, you might be dead, but if you write your own story, man, nobody can say it better than you. Nobody can. You know what I'm saying? So that's how you make your own music. So with that being said, you know, not only you got to make your own music, but you got to title it. That's really yeah. important, the titling. Title. So now let's talk about titling. I want to talk about one catch phrase that's been popped. Like they say, he's not been here for two years. For me to be sitting in his right hand side and his truck at work in his two years, like how we met is a whole different story, but that's not the whole thing. But how we met is because of his what he started, right? right. Within two years, he he's he did something, he said something, he showed something. That was unique, it was different. And also, there's a couple of things that he said. One of the things he said was God. <laughs> one, of these, one of the things he said was God. So yeah. God God became a guy in entertainment, right? People wearing this shirt, if you go to Detroit, Hamtamic, I've seen people wearing this shirt blindly. They don't even know why they're wearing it. They're just wearing it because of God entertainment. God, because it. the people that are behind it, they're wearing it because, now I'm not saying they're wearing it because of the music, but they're wearing it because of the person that they know. Who we came yeah. from yeah. and also they're wearing it because of god the, the, the sketchy right. the phrase and it's like everybody uses it so now where that came from everything has <laughs> a start where that came from the i want to know listen the word god man you know listen man a lot of people gotta say so god is the word god is infection okay so you know how some people with chukwa we zoom soon in our mouth and i'm not soon <laughs> right so that's one Number two, you get a cut, you don't treat it well, you get infected. That's a yeah. guy. You know what I'm saying? So that's two. And then, you know, like, you know, growing up, you know what I'm saying, in the hood, bro, you know, you know, people do shit. You know, we get fucked up, you know. I don't want to put too much details in it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, instead of like, you know, we had a, you know, between our friends, just to be like, yo, bro. You know you say, You know, instead of using the well, word, me, I just want to uh, say one yeah, word because uh, it's just, I want to say this. Uh -huh. He doesn't want to say it. I want to uh -huh. say it. Uh -huh. yeah. When people step you on your back, we say, God, 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 God. God, God. So, you know, like, you know, from then, you know, first time I used to, I'm the creator, well, I'm not the creator of the word God. God, but yeah. What, 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 man, what, that was like back in 05 and 06. Right. So it was a hang out with your friends, something happened, you're like, yeah, like, God, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, oh, my God, you know, we foolish to get delays, you know what I'm saying? Like, something like that, just. Randomly, like, yo, you get into a fight, you're like, what you see? You know what I'm saying? You know, you get somebody broke your heart, you're like, I'm not in this guy. So, he's the way you start just random shit, just wish to just say God to. You know, it's just like me and my friends only knew that, and then it expanded to like few other crowds that hang out with us. And like the word God just became popular, you know what I'm saying, from back in the day. Then. And then, so me coming back, you know what I'm saying, the word God, I used to use it all the time. You're like, yeah, bro, you be me out of the whole time, me and my very close friends, right. the word God. But usually God means infection. So when I was making music, you know, I was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? So first time I did a track and the guy's about to upload it for me, it's like, yo, I was like, put my name Iki, you know? Yeah. It's like, yo, it's like too many of them here, bro. You know what you <laughs> mean, Iki? You know, they're like, you put something in the front or the back. Right. I'm like, shit, what do I do, you know? So I'm like, you know, I'm like, yo, put Iki, God. God. <laughs> so that's how. 
the EP guy just happened and then a few months later I'm like, yo, you know, now like you gotta to have a title for your YouTube, bro. You know, you're getting one, two videos of a title. It's like, you know, a lot of people have used different words. I'm like, just put guy entertainment. You know what I'm saying? And we used to say guy entertainment back in the day was the party. Like, yo, guy entertainment up in here. Like, just to, you know, try to, you know, because I told you, rapping in our, in my life, right, right. my friends. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, guy entertainment. That's how that was started.